The left simply cannot stand that there is a black conservative on the Supreme Court. They will never get over this. Their hatred for Clarence Thomas is the greatest hatred they have for any politician or any political figure. That includes Donald Trump, because Clarence Thomas is, according to the left, a race traitor. And this is why you can get away with, if you are a left-wing commentator, you can get away with violating criminal law, by the way, by offering open bribery to judicial officials. So that's exactly what John Oliver did the other night. It is amazing how our erstwhile comedians have decided that basically they are just going to lecture us on politics. It really is incredible. I mean, Stephen Colbert has lost his mind. He's doing like direct-to-camera lectures now. And what's amazing about that is it's tactically inefficient. It's foolish. Like John, John Stewart did this with his Apple TV show. So he did his Apple TV show. His Apple TV show is unwatchably bad because it's him doing political lectures and he's not a political lecturer. He's a comedian. And then he went back to Comedy Central and he has sort of readopted his old format. And the show's really watchable and, and quite funny, even though I disagree with John Stewart on nearly everything. But all these comedians have basically decided that the world is too serious for them to comedy anymore. So the other day, John Oliver did an entire segment in which he offered a million dollars to Clarence Thomas to retire from the Supreme Court. Because, of course, the idea is that Clarence Thomas is deeply corrupt, despite the fact that he is not, in fact, deeply corrupt. Here is John Oliver attempting a routine that is not even remotely funny, but I guess pleases all the people who watch late night the way that they, the way that most normal people go to church or synagogue and listen to a rabbi or a priest. From stripping away women's rights to January 6th cases you definitely shouldn't be hearing to potentially helping roll back decades of federal regulations. And you deserve a break, you know, away from the meanness of Washington. So you can be surrounded by the regular folks whose lives you've made demonstrably worse for decades now. And the good news is... I think we can help you there because since your favorite mode of travel might be in need of an upgrade, we are excited to offer you <laughs> this brand new top of the line Prevost Marathon motor coach. Look at this beauty, Clarence. It's worth $2.4 million and it's got a full bedroom. Yes, that is a king bed. One and a half baths, a f***ing fireplace. Four TVs, a washer dryer, and, and I quote, a residential sized fridge. And if you're thinking, what will my friends say if I take this offer? Will they judge me as they sit in their boardrooms and mega yachts and Hitler shrines? Will they still treat me to luxury vacations and sing songs about me off their phones? Well, that's the beauty of friendship, Clarence. If they're real friends, they'll love you no matter what your job is. So I guess this might be the perfect way to find out who your real friends actually are. So that's the offer. A million dollars a year, Clarence, and a brand new condo on wheels. And all you have to do in return is sign the contract and get the f*** off the Supreme Court. Talk it over with your totally best friend in the whole world. Because the clock starts now. So funny. 30 days, Clarence. Wow, Let's so much, so much humour. Again, it's the clapter, right? The clapter. That's what they're going for. They're not going for actual laughs anymore. They're going for the clapping. Woo! Woo! But not actual laughter because that's not funny in any way. There's also something a little racist about you going after, say, Clarence Thomas as opposed to, say, Samuel Alito or Amy Coney Barrett or Kavanaugh or any of the other justices on the Supreme Court. I noticed that it's Clarence Thomas that you are picking on. By the way, he's just lying about some of this stuff, right? When he says, you're friends with their Hitler shrines. The friend that he is talking about happens to have a garden in which he collected all of the sort of relics of evil dictatorships of the past to remind people that evil dictatorships are in fact evil. And instead, he's supposedly a Hitler devotee. Well, what is truly uh, amazing about all of this is that, again, the Supreme Court, despite being a conservative Supreme Court now, has not been wildly overstepping its boundaries. They're just pissed off that Roe versus Wade got kicked back to the states because Roe versus Wade was garbage in the first place. But this Supreme Court, has issued a bunch of rulings that actively have not been right-wing, including rulings that, for example, the Civil Rights Act somehow covers transgenderism. As a Gorsuch ruling, for example. The, the thing that the left cannot stand is anybody who is deemed a, a traitor, a race traitor, and, and Clarence Thomas, again, the fact that he is black is what drives these people absolutely up a wall. It's why they hate him significantly more than they hate, say, Kavanaugh or Amy Coney Barrett or any of the rest of the white right-wing justices on the Supreme Court. Clarence Thomas is the person who they have to degrade. They have to. He's a brilliant jurist. I mean, truly brilliant. I've been saying for my entire legal career, you know, going all the way back to law school, I've been saying Clarence Thomas is the most important Supreme Court justice. And that if you read his opinions, they are 
They're excellent models of clarity in thinking and clarity in writing. They're not as flowery or as beautiful as Scalia's opinions, but they're quite incisive, quite direct, and, and really to the point. That's why the left hates him. It's why the left, ha- by the way, it's, it's the same reason why they, they pretend that Thomas Sowell isn't an intellectual. If you violate their perceived priorities with regard to race and intersectionality, you must be destroyed. Combine that with the fact that comedians are no longer comedians. They are now, what, angry prophets of the airwaves? And, uh, and what you end up with is, is John Oliver descending from abroad to lecture American justices who grew up in the sharecropper South on how they ought to take a bribe. Amazing stuff there. Let's be real. French fries, they're the only good vegetable. But unfortunately, they're not healthy. They're bad for you. Well, balance of nature, fruits and veggies are the most convenient way to get whole food ingredients every day, like the actual vegetables that they count toward you know, what you should be eating. Balance of Nature uses an advanced cold vacuum process that encapsulates fruits and veggies into whole food supplements without sacrificing those natural antioxidants. The capsules are completely void of additives, fillers, extracts, synthetics, pesticides, or added sugar. The only thing in Balance of Nature's fruit and veggie capsules are, you know, like the fruits and the veggies. Right now, my listeners can get 35% off their first order and they'll also get a free fiber and spice supplement. Balance of Nature's fiber and spice supplement is a revolutionary fiber drink with a unique blend of 12 spices and whole foods. I'm flying pretty much constantly for the last few months. Gotta tell you, I really rely on balance of nature. There's never been an easier way to make sure you're getting your daily dose of fruits and veggies. Experience balance of nature for yourself today. Go to balanceofnature.com. Use promo code Shapiro for 35% off your first order as a preferred customer. Plus, get a free bottle of fiber and spice. That's balanceofnature.com, promo code Shapiro for 35% off that first preferred order. Plus, that free bottle of fiber and spice. So yesterday, Joe Biden was was facing down the stairs of Air Force One again, and it went real poorly. These are the short stairs. Again, they've, they've tried to have him load on the short stairs so that he has fewer stairs to trip on. Boom, they boom, twice. Twice he almost trips on the stairs. So again, he keeps falling up the stairs. Things are going really, really well. And then a reporter asked Joe Biden if Gavin Newsom is going to replace him on the ticket, and Joe Biden started speaking Swahili or something. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Well, I'm looking for. I'm looking at you. We're looking at you. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa! What I came to tell you was, I told you we'd be announcing sanctions on Russia. We'll have a major package announced on Friday. I'll be happy to sit with you all while doing that. Okay. Okay, so he's asked about Gavin Newsom, and he's, whoa, 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 a squirrel. Things are going amazingly well for him. Again, the reality is that his vacillation, his uncertainty, his mushiness on policy in the foreign realm is hurting the country. His wild leftism on policy in the domestic realm is hurting the country. And all of it comes together in the figurehead of an 81-year-old man who is no longer sentient and trips up the stairs. All this is really bad. So what exactly is Biden's strategy? His strategy is highlight Trump. Which means, once again, folks, if you wish Donald Trump to win, and I'm somebody who in a Trump versus Biden race wishes Donald Trump to win, if you wish Trump to win, then he needs to ratchet down the crazy. The entire campaign for Joe Biden is going to be Donald Trump is crazy. Yes, I'm old. Yes, I'm senile. Yes, my policy sucks, but he's totally crazy. That is going to be Biden's argument. I'm not saying that. Biden is saying that. Here was CNN reporting that yesterday. President Biden is ordering his campaign to get far more aggressive when it comes to his likely opponent. This brand new reporting from CNN's MJ Lee is that Biden personally instructed his top campaign aides recently to spend even more time painting Trump as unhinged and calling out his inflammatory rhetoric. Two sources tell MJ that the thrust of Biden's instruction was to significantly ramp up the campaign's efforts to highlight the crazy S (laughs) that that Trump says in public, CNN's MJ Lee is at the White House. I guess I can say the S word, but maybe too early on the West Coast, at least. <laughs> MJ? Yeah, Dana, you know, I think this reporting gives us some interesting insight into how the president himself uh, personally views his campaign strategy. What I was told by sources is, as you said, uh, President Biden instructing personally some of his top campaign aides to essentially be even more aggressive in highlighting uh, some of Trump's most inflammatory and wild comments. Again, that is Biden's only strategy. It's the only thing that he can apply at this point, which means that it's incumbent on Trump to say fewer things. Just let Biden, just let him wither on the vine out there. That's all. 
That's all Donald Trump has to do. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. 